State Representative Chuck Moss, the Republican from the Birmingham area. Nice to see you in person. Good morning. Nice to be here. Saul Anuzis is on the phone, too, the former chair of the Michigan Republican Party, now with Coast to Coast Strategies. Nice to talk to you, sir. Good morning, Michael Patrick. Um, a lot of Republicans, we understand, still searching for the ideal 2012 presidential candidate, somebody who can fire up both the fiscal and social conservative wings of the GOP and get some swing voters, too, maybe some Hispanics. And so kind of lately, the talk has turned to former Florida governor Jeb Bush, the son of uh, George Herbert Walker Bush, the brother of George W. Bush. He was caught in a hallway yesterday going to an event by a reporter, and the reporter asked him about his, uh, you know, designs on maybe being president. Here's what he said. Right. Good morning, Governor. Good morning. How are you? Welcome to Louisville. Good to be here. How's it been? So far? Great. How's Rand Paul? He's a good man. Yeah. He's going to be elected Senate, and hopefully, God willing, be part of the Republican majority in the Senate to stop this incredible expansion of government in our lives. And when do you announce your plans, or when will you decide your plans for president? My plans are to give a as best a speech, muddle through my speech here about education reform, and then go back to work. That's, I'm not running for president. Jeb Bush says, I'm not running for president. Does, does he mean it, or does he mean I'm not running for president right now, Saul? Well, I think he means that. I'm down here in Louisville myself, and, um, you know, he was a, he's a rock star. This is a guy that most Republicans consider the strongest, if not uh, the best, uh, Bush in the family, so to speak, especially mm -hmm. if you're a conservative Republican. Um, he's very well regarded. Um, as most people know, he has a uh, Cuban-American wife. Uh, he speaks fluent Spanish. Uh, this is somebody who uh, has done a tremendous amount of outreach and I think won almost the majority of the Hispanic vote in Florida when he ran for governor. So I think many eyes and many hopes are on Jeb Bush someday emerging as a potential candidate, and if that 2012, then, then sometime in the future for sure. Why not now? I, I think he'd be a great candidate right now. I, I think he'd be a very strong candidate, but, you know, let's be realistic. There is some Bush fatigue. Uh, there's uh, an anti-George you know, W. Bush feeling out there that has not subsided. So I think that there is a practical reason, uh, and politicians do have to have some practical sense, with respect to timing and politics. So I think Jeb Bush is being prudent and uh, smart about his decision-making process. And, um, you know, by the time 2012 rolls around, maybe things will have changed. But uh, my guess is uh, if we, God forbid, have another four years of Barack Obama, America will be ready for a change. And somebody like Jeb Bush would be a very strong candidate. Um, uh, Representative Moss, who is, would you say, the front runner for president on the Republican side right now? Well, I don't see that there is one. Uh, I don't think anyone has uh, coalesced or jumped ahead. But you've got to remember, uh, imagine back to, you know, you and I can remember back to 1978 at this point, who really saw Ronald Reagan as the guy? Mm -hmm. uh, I, he didn't even start uh, coming on strong as the one candidate until early 80 with the, uh, you know, I paid for this microphone, Mr. Green speech. So, uh, uh, you know, it's still a little early. I don't see any one particular individual that's, that's captured it. And I agree with Saul that uh, at this point I think another Bush might be a little more than the American people are interested in. You always wonder what would have happened if Jeb Bush had won his first election instead of George. I mean, we might have had uh, eight years of Jeb Bush instead. Mm -hmm. And uh, most of the Bush insiders that I know say that, they, that Jeb was always the one, uh, Saul, that they figured would have the best chance to really be the son-turned-president, not George W., so. Uh, that's probably true, and I think if you take a look at him, uh, you know, he has a much more um, kind of articulate speaking style. Uh, he's more gregarious. He's a big guy. Um, you know, he definitely would probably, at least from a perceptional standpoint, look more presidential, uh, which is part of the game as well, because you walk into a room and make, you know, someone's presence does matter. But, you know, uh, when, the, when the chips came down in, on 9-11, uh, I'm kind of glad it was George that was there. I think as the years go by, you're going to see he was, he was Harry Truman. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big George Bush fan, believe it or not. George I, W. George W. Mm -hmm. Well, H, all, all H.W. did was help finish off winning the Cold War mm -hmm. and, win, and win Desert <laughs> Storm. I mean, yeah, 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 no big deal. But uh, <laughs> So, yeah, that's all he did. But uh, I think that, uh, I, I think that, uh, that old George is going to look better and better and better as history, history uh, shows uh, and well, unfolds. I think, that's very, I, think that's, I think that's very true. And I think, look, all of us always have a more critical view of something that just happened. And when you look back and put it in perspective and put it into historical context, I agree. I think George W. will go down as a very strong president, someone who did the right thing. I mean, how many, you know, an event like 9-11 is so unique in our history. 
uh, it will always be remembered. It will always be talked about, and you know the history books will reflect on what we did and how we did and how we reacted uh, in a very big way, and it will always be a big part of our history for generations to come. Which family, American political family, has the more impressive dynasty, the Kennedys or the Bushes? The oh, Bushes, without a doubt. I mean, Kennedys, uh, Kennedys have the uh, sort of this romantic legend, but you only had one president, and uh, uh, you know John was only uh, was only in office uh, till '63. Mm -hmm. Bobby definitely captured the imagination, but he, you know he never got there. As mm -hmm. far as uh, symbols, and I, I would have to say uh, Kennedys. As far as reality, Bushes. Okay, state representative. Yeah, and, I, and I think you have to you really have to be realistic and say the Bush the Bush legacy is not even close to being over. Yeah, that's true, and it could be Jeb next. Maybe we'll see. Television viewers, thanks for being with us today. We appreciate it very much. We'll see you tomorrow. Radio listeners, stay where you are. Solanusis, thank you very much. State Representative Chuck Moss, the next time we talk, we'll know who the Republican nominee is. That's right. Look forward to it. Buckle up and stay tuned. It's Michael Patrick Shields. Someone do me a favor and pour me some Jaeger and I'll grab my guitar and play. Yankee security. I hadn't heard Mick Jagger was at the party and I was like, yeah, come on, it's ridiculous. Mick Jagger. Well, you remember Altamont?